Hello, everybody. This is Brother Luke, Sensei Preacher. Welcome to this Wednesday night Bible study for the Church of the Eternally Secure. Uh, for the regular members of the congregation, uh, thank you so much for uh, joining us every Wednesday and Sunday. And if you're new here, I want to welcome you. Uh, I hope that uh, you'll become a regular participant in this congregation. So tonight uh, I have Brother Cripps and also Sister Renee. However, Sister Renee is joining us as soon as possible. Uh, it may be a little while because she had an urgent thing she had to go do. And as soon as that's done, she'll be joining us too. But uh, we're going to go ahead and start. Uh, so before we get going, Brother Cripps, introduce yourself. Some people might not know who you are. Hey, my name is Jason Cripps, and I'm uh, glad to be here again. I love uh, being part of this uh, congregation, and uh, thanks to Brother Luke again for um, having me uh, come on and be a part of the family here. Um, I've been a listener of this uh, broadcast for a while, and it's nice to be a participant as well. Um, so I have uh, in the chat room, uh, that's that's our, our show. Uh, I don't call it my show because it's a it's a group of people uh, coming together for a certain uh, task, which is to, um, it, it's just to have people uh, join us and be a part of that. But it's True Story Live, and I'm glad to be here tonight and glad to get into the Word. Thank you. All right. I'm very glad you're uh, participating. And um, uh, as I said, uh, Renee is a, a regular participant in this program. And we, we've done some very interesting studies um, over the last couple of months, every Wednesday night, discussing some very famous sermons. <clears throat> but uh, a couple of weeks ago, we decided we were going to begin working our way through the Pauline epistles. Yes. So <clears throat> we got uh, started with Romans 1.1, 1, 1, and uh, now we're up to Romans uh, 3.20. If you have not seen the uh, previous studies uh, on the beginning of Romans, I, I hope you'll go back and watch that. Uh, both the first program and the second program, I think, were really, really important. Um, the first program laid a foundation so that you can understand the, uh, uh, let's say, the context of the book. Uh, you know, who wrote it? When was it written? Who was it written to? And what's the main theme? And, and a lot of interesting things that will lay the foundation so you can study the book with, with that in mind. Uh, and then the... The program we did last Wednesday was actually quite, I would say it's unique. Uh, if anybody didn't see last week's program, uh, I, I can't urge you any more than please watch last week's program because we introduced an idea called Pro Sopapia. I've talked about it before on my videos, but uh, Brother Cripps and I were able to do uh, a, a dramatic uh, uh, reading of uh, I'd say Romans, I think, 1, uh, fourteen to Romans 3.10. Uh, and we acted it out as, as, as I believe it should be understood, with Paul having a dialogue with a, with, with a, a false teacher. Uh, so if, that, if you're not familiar with that, and if you're curious about how that works, <laughs> go watch last week's program. Before we get started with Romans 3.20 today, uh, anything you want to say that, uh, as far as the introduction uh, before? Brother Cripps. Oh, well, well, let me first add that uh, that was really a lot of fun, uh, uh, the, the acting it out and everything. And I really enjoyed that. I hope we actually uh, do something like that again, because I think it was very meaningful. And uh, we got some positive feedback about that as well. So uh, that's all. Just um, I think I'm ready to go, ready to get into it. Just hello, hello to everyone in the chat room. I see uh, Celine in there. Hello, Hendrix. I see you as well. I don't know Rod, but welcome. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's, that's, I'm glad you mentioned that. Let me say hi to the, everybody in the chat room. But uh, per, uh, especially I want to say something to Celine because I got an email from you today, sister, about, um, and I, I have seen it. I will contact you so we can uh, schedule that. Uh, soon. And uh, to everybody else, uh, welcome. Uh, okay. Let's just start with uh, Romans 3.20. Uh, I don't like to read that much. I like to read little bits at a time. So starting with verse 3.20. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. 
for by the law is the knowledge of sin. Okay, brother, there's a, some major points in that one verse there. What, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, several. It makes it very clear. Therefore, the deeds of the law, there shall be no flesh justified. So if you just take that part, it makes it very clear to me. Um, no flesh. That's the, that's the part I see is the, just the last part. Shall no flesh be justified. Mm -hmm. Of course, we know what justification comes from. It comes from comes from uh, the Lord. So he justifies us. It doesn't come from anything we do. I, I think that uh, when we see the word therefore, let's not forget that uh, therefore is uh, saying basically, based on everything I just told you. Yeah, <laughs> so, <laughs> that's right. So uh, that's another reason. Paul is telling you, go back and watch last week's video. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Therefore, go back and watch. Yeah, yeah. So, because if you don't understand uh, what we did last week, you're going to have a totally different way of of looking at uh, the beginning of Romans. And I do think that this idea of prosopopoeia that uh, again, if you don't know what it is, I'm I'm sorry. That means you missed last week's program. But if you go back and watch it, that'll get you up to speed. But this idea of prosopopoeia, uh, not only am I convinced that it's the correct way of understanding the first uh, few chapters, but I believe prosopopoeia may also be uh, uh, used elsewhere in the Pauline epistles. And when we get when we get to those points, matter of fact, as we go to continue on this, we ought to always keep in the back of our mind, brother, that prosopopoeia could be being used again. So let's let's just keep that and consider that as yes, a possibility. Sir. I would say particularly if you hear the Apostle Paul saying something that doesn't sound like Paul. <laughs> there are some times in the Pauline epistles, I read it and it just doesn't seem like Paul's doctrine. Yeah. And you got you gotta ask yourself why is Paul contradicting himself? Is there some mystery here I don't understand? <clears throat> well, if that I think we showed last week, by the way, uh, you and also uh, uh, Brother Steve, who uh, participated with us last week, yeah, uh, you you both saw in your summary said that it might have been the, the greatest Bible study you've ever seen or heard. Oh, I did say that. Yeah. <laughs> it's recorded for everyone to hear, and I meant it, too. It was, it was wonderful. Yeah. So uh, that I and I don't think that's overstating it. I think it is is that important to understand this. Now, if a person understands this idea of prosopopoeia and you want to reject it and you want to and you want to try to understand those uh, uh, first few chapters uh, in a in a different way, that's fine. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you're going to have to try to figure out how to explain uh, what we think are the verses that the uh, the false teacher is is stating and, and how you're going to have to find another way of explaining why Paul is saying such things. Right. Because it's unpauline really. Uh, okay. So let me talk more about this verse here though. Um, okay. Therefore, okay. Based on everything I have been telling you, Paul said, I'm going to sum it up for you. By the deeds of the law shall no flesh be justified. No one will be justified in the sight of God. God will consider no one justified by the deeds of the law. And I would say that uh, not only is uh, this the main thing, and the main contribution of the Apostle Paul throughout all of his epistles, it, this is the recurring theme um, of course, he does teach us a lot of other things, but this is, to me, the main contribution of the Apostle Paul. We can learn from Jesus and from uh, Peter and from the book of John. We learn, believe in Jesus for salvation. Paul agrees, but Paul is, is saying, believe in Jesus for salvation and don't try to use the law to justify yourself in any way or else you've ruined the whole thing. It has no value if you, unless you just get rid of the law. So that's what Paul is doing, and he, you, you have to just keep that in mind. That's what he continues to do in all of his letters. Uh, then he says, "For by the law is the knowledge of sin." Mm -hmm. So, brother, we, the law is not there for us to 
make ourselves acceptable to God. Say, look, God, look, look how well I followed your laws. God said, were you? Were That's you, right. Were you perfect? And Did I you follow God. the law perfectly, Brother Cripps? No, sir. No, sir. Well, then, then you're not justified in God's sight. He said you got to follow it perfectly. So uh, why don't you just give up on that and instead uh, cast the law away as a means of salvation and instead realize that uh, you need to be justified in God's sight by grace alone, through faith alone, and Christ alone. So verse 20 has a lot of um, you know theology in it. Yeah, also it states the purpose of the law in the first place was to give us the knowledge of sin. Yes. Well, okay. Let's talk a little bit about that. Yes, sir. Uh, the, first of all, the law that he's talking about here is uh, the Mosaic laws. Right? Yep. And the Mosaic laws were given to Israel. One of the biggest mistakes that I see among all Christians, even many Christians who are very knowledgeable, very, uh, they understand the gospel, uh, they're very experienced, they've studied a lot, but they, for somehow this one fact kind of goes over their head and they want to keep somehow relating us to the Mosaic laws when the Mosaic laws were never given to anybody except Israel. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's whole groups there's whole groups that do that <laughs> they yeah. build a doctrine around it yeah yeah so they're uh they're not only uh, uh groups that uh you know we don't need to identify any particular groups right no, now if you find anybody who identifies as some kind of christian and they start talking about commandments and laws and and trying to add that as a, a as a requirement for your salvation we call that legalism, lordship salvation, works salvation. But um, uh, the first thing that they don't understand, and I want the viewers to understand, is that Mosaic law was never given to the Gentiles. That only applied to the Jews, That's right. the, the, the nation of Israel. So why is Paul talking to Galatians? I mean, to Romans here. These people are not Jews, are they? No. Why is he even talking about the law to the Romans? And if, if, the, if the Mosaic law wasn't given to the, the, the people in Rome, why, why would he even bring up the law? What, what, do, you, what do you think? I have a theory. <laughs> it's in the verse to, to, uh, to give us the knowledge of sin. It's right there. Yeah. That's, all, that's the reason I would think that he would be talking about it. And to, okay. to draw a delineation between it being of the flesh or or uh, of the law or being of God. Okay, that's true. Can't deny it. It says it right in the verse. But my question is, why is the subject of the law even being discussed among Roman believers? Uh, but all we got to do is look back at the earlier chapters. The, the whole point of that was you have a teacher who, mm -hmm. who we could identify as what, Paul calls the Judaizers, the men from Judah, and they're uh, telling people you got to be circumcised, you can't be saved, you got to uh, you know follow the Sabbath, you can't be saved, you got to follow all the, the laws of Moses, or you can't be saved, you got to become a Jew, or you can't be saved. Is basically what is, these false teachers are telling people, and that's the argument between Paul and the Judaizers. Absolutely. Uh, so the reason he's talking about the law is. These Romans wouldn't even be familiar with Mosaic laws if they didn't have the false teachers coming in there trying to tell them, well, Paul's a false teacher. And uh, uh, what he's told you is you just have to believe, but you got to become a Jew and get circumcised and follow the laws. Now they now they are confused because they what do you mean? We got all these laws of Judaism. Now we, we got to follow that. And so uh, that's the that's the dispute that Paul has. And uh, Renee made a video uh, recently that. She's come to the agreement with me and some others that have been saying that that the thorn in the flesh of the Apostle Paul is not blindness or a bad back or anything. It is um, it's a it's a vernacular. I would say that guy's a pain in the ass. All he does is go to my videos and troll and do this and try to ch tell everybody I'm a false teacher. He's a pain in the ass. 
Well, <laughs> Paul, Paul identifies as a thorn in the flesh. So he's talking about the false teacher that we just did that dialogue with. Yeah. Um, that dramatic reading, you know, I was the false teacher, you were the apostle Paul, and that's what Paul thinks of as the thorn in the flesh, these people who are keep on trying to uh, taint his ministry. Um, so I believe that the, the only reason he even has to talk about the law here, they wouldn't have thought about the law uh, if, if someone hadn't come in, one of these Judaizers, and told them, wait, wait, it's not Jesus alone, you got to follow the law too. <laughs> What's your response to that, brother? Any, you think that might, yeah, correct? yeah, I think it's plausible. Absolutely, very, very well could have been that. I mean, people theorized on what it was. Uh, you know, as long as I've been alive, I've heard people talk about this. Okay, uh, now so the, the, the uh, part so saying, do we ignore the commandments? Aaron Benton says, do we ignore the commandments? Uh, okay. First of all, the commandments were not given to Gentiles. Uh, in the Pauline epistles, we'll get to the, this at some point. Uh, Paul talks about how uh, the, the com com commandments, the laws of Moses were not given to the Gentiles, but the, the Gentiles were given conscience. The law was written in their heart in the form of conscience, uh, just a natural understanding of right and wrong. Uh, but as you said, the, Paul, the, the law, the point of the law was twofold. For, for Israel. One was to show them the impossibility of being justified before God by following it because no one could follow up perfectly and, right. and perfection was required. So that's what Paul's saying in this verse. But there's another reason the law was given. In fact, the only re reason stated in the Old Testament is it's not the reason Paul just put here. The reason it's stated in the Old Testament is the law was given to Israel so that they will be blessed and, and get to the, the promised land and that they were the land they were promised. So if you follow these, these laws, I'll bless you and you'll live and you'll go you'll get to the promised land. And that was why that, that's what they would get from following the laws. There's nothing in the Old Testament that says the Jewish people follow the laws and you'll earn earn heaven. Uh, so uh, but here Paul's using the law and saying, like Jesus did when he when he was Telling the, uh, remember when he's talking to the um, uh, the rich young ruler, and, and uh, the rich young ruler leaves all dejected yep. because he realizes he's not willing to really follow the law completely as Jesus is tell, telling him. If you really want to be perfect and do this, and he he knew he wasn't willing to do it, and yeah. then Jesus said, uh, "It's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man." to uh, enter uh, heaven and his apostles asked him but lord if that's the case how is it possible for anyone to get saved because at this point they finally realized he's saying cut off your hands gouge out your eyes yeah. sell everything you own better mm -hmm. be perfect and they're realizing that what we can't do everything you're requiring us to do it's impossible how is it possible and jesus says aha now you finally get it. It's yep. impossible to follow the law. That's why I came, and that's why you need me. And so G Jesus explained this, the law serving that purpose. Paul is saying the law serves that purpose. But the Jews didn't understand that uh, because in the scriptures it said the purpose of the law was so they could be blessed and get to the promised land. Nice. Okay. Uh, just if you want to elaborate anything I say at any point, just go ahead. Especially since there's the two of us, I don't need to call on you. Just, just say what you need to. Oh, sure. Okay. Sure. okay. Uh, let's go to the next verse. It says, uh, okay, verse 21. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Christ unto all and upon all them that believe. Well, this is another one of these run-on sentences. We were talking about it. For all them that believe, for there is no difference, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has set Fourth, to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past 
through the forbearance of God to declare, I say at this time, his righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus, period. Amen. Now, I don't want to cover that much ground at once, but I wanted to get to a period. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Paul has this long run on sentences, and finally we find a period. We'll go back to the beginning of that and go through it more carefully. Okay. But, uh, uh, so let's start with that first one here, uh, 321. Why don't you read that and give me your thoughts just on that portion? Sure, but now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. All right. Um, yeah, so the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. So to me, that says that the law and the prophets are witnesses to the righteousness of God, and that makes complete total sense. Um manifested you know what manifested means uh yeah it's pretty clear mm -hmm. uh you know brother um and and the viewers um you've probably heard me say before um i'm a kjv firstist and i i use the kjv that's the scriptures and a lot of the modern translations are flawed in a lot of ways and and they even don't even include a lot of a very important verses they don't even have them. They've omitted them. But I do like to look at the amplified version and, and compare it because it amplifies. Brother, isn't that what you and I are doing right now? I asked you to tell me your thoughts on something. You're amplifying the verse, giving me a, more, a, a longer explanation of what you think it means, right? That's true. So the amplified translation does that. But here's what how the amplified does it. They... They have a period at that point. <laughs> in the KJV, you have uh, semicolons and colons and stuff. And, and, but in the Amplify, at that first point says, this is how it's phrased. But now the righteousness of God has been clearly revealed independently and completely apart from the law, though it is actually confirmed by the law and the words and writings of the prophets. Period. Period. So uh, I think that the Amplified, even just in the punctuation, it's helpful because I would have liked to just stop right there. <laughs> you know, yeah. when you're reading, you're reading. But uh, yeah, he's uh, maybe that's a more sensible way to, to do it. Um, let's look at the chat room and, and see if uh, I'm getting any feedback from there. Would that be your second favorite next to King James is the Amplified? Uh, yeah, I, but I don't. I don't really consider it a translation. I consider it an, uh, almost a commentary and a, and a, and a uh, an amplification. Sure. Yeah, that's the one I like to look at. And then sometimes I'll look at some another translation, but very rarely. Usually it's just KJV and then the Amplified. I find is helpful, but occasionally I find something in the Amplified that is, says "repent of sin." When it doesn't, it's not even talking about repentance of sin. Right. So uh, it's most of the time, it's like 99% uh, agreeable. And then they throw in that heresy once in a while. Um, let me see. Okay. I get when people say, Jesus died for one half of your sins, but you've got to do something when I wasn't even born then, or before the cross. Yeah, Jesus died for half your sins, like the sins before, maybe the sins before you got saved. And then after you get saved, you're starting over and you got to keep it clean after that. Maybe, Celine, that's what you're thinking of. People say that. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, so uh, verse uh, 21 in, in the Amplified, but now the righteousness of God has been clearly revealed independently and completely apart from the law though it is actually confirmed by the law and the words of writings of the prophets. Okay, there's, uh, there's a little bit of a difference. So the meaning, of course, is not changed, but it's just uh, the way it's explained is different. Um, I'll go on to the next verse unless you have more to say about that. I don't. Okay, let's go to verse 22. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe. Mm. Okay, I'm going to stop there. Yeah, that's a good place. Stop right there. 
And let me see, let me look at the Amplified and see if it stops there out of curiosity. Um, this righteousness of God comes through faith in Jesus Christ for all those, Jew or Gentile, who believe and trust in him and acknowledge him as God's son, period. Yeah, see, they, they put a period there, as I yeah. think there should be, because of the, the next point is, is uh, different, making a different point. Yeah. Okay, so, uh, all right, what are your thoughts on uh, verse uh, 22? Well, first of all, I love it. I love what's being said here, and it's by faith. So uh, in the verse before, it talked about works in the flesh, and now we're getting the, the meat of it, which is, well, how is it that we have righteousness? So he's answering a question here then, which is by faith in Jesus Christ unto all, and that's another statement which I am glad is being said, that it's not just to the Jews. I do like that the Amplified separates Jews and uh, Gentiles, makes it very clear, but in here, we're able to see that it's upon all them that believe. So believing is the is the key factor here, and it comes by faith of Jesus Christ. In other words, he's the one that gives it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, that's beautiful. That's all I have to say about that. Well, um, um, that's good stuff. Some people make a, a, a big distinction when it says things like in, on, of, uh, and uh, I believe to believe in Jesus or to believe on Jesus is equally uh, able to save us. Believing on Jesus, I would say, is like I'm depending on him. I'm relying on him. I'm trusting on him. Uh, believing in, it means I'm, I'm believing in his promise and his ability to save me. You know, uh, I'm believing into Jesus. Being, you know, like I'm in Christ, Christ is in me. So believing in to Jesus. So believing in Jesus or believing on Jesus, uh, I, I, I know that Matthias makes a big distinction and he thinks you're, you're not saved by believing in, only believing on. But I, there's just too many verses. Almost all the verses say believe in, not believe on for no. salvation. But in this verse, it says the faith of Christ. Let's read that again. In the KJV. It says, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all up and upon all that believe. Uh, so this says, by faith of Jesus Christ, and in the Amplified, it says, uh, comes through faith in Jesus Christ for all. So in the Amplified, and probably most other translations, I think it might say, believing in when it says the faith of Christ. Uh, and But there are people that say the faith of Christ is, 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 is very significant. Uh, uh, we need to get that right because it's, it's Christ's faith, not our faith. Yeah. Uh, but I, I don't, I'm not sure that's the right way to, to, to look at it. And I'll, you tell me what you think. Um, did faith? Did Christ need faith? Uh, uh, Christ, no. He did. I mean, yeah. some God need faith? No. Yeah, I mean, God. I'm, I don't think Jesus needed faith. No. We might. We might think that. Well, he was tempted in the garden. I mean, I mean, in the garden, he asked, "Please take this cup away from me," and and he went ahead and anyway, and that was a demonstration of his faith. But Christ. What faith means you don't know, but you're you're believing and hoping and trusting, but you don't know. If you know, it's not faith. If, you know, we we walk by faith, not by sight. Amen. So faith is the opposite of knowing. It's believing even though you don't know, believing even though you haven't seen him and touched him. So, well, that'd, that'd be like someone saying that they that they uh, forgot that their father exists. I mean, he he spent time with the father. He, he is not coming from the same position we are where we have not seen him. He's lived with and been with the Father already. Yeah. So he's not going to, just because he was made into flesh, he still has that God part in him, no matter what people say. So he, he knows full well that it's, that it's true. He doesn't have to have faith. Well, uh, Hendrick says, what's the Greek word for faith in verse 22? It could be the obedience kind instead of the trust one. That's the point I'm, I want to make, is that we could do what the Amplified or other translations do and just say it's it's believing in or faith in in Christ instead of faith of Christ. 
Uh, but or we could say it's the faithfulness of Christ. The Christ was faithful. He was willing to go to that cross. He was faithful to do what he came to do. Yeah. So uh, I believe probably the right way to understand it is, let me read it that way. Let me see. So verse 22 says, even the righteousness of God, which is by the faithfulness of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all that believe. For there is, okay, the faithfulness. It, because I can't, I cannot accept that Jesus had faith because he's omniscient. Yeah. Um, he doesn't have to have faith if he knows. He knows he's been to heaven. He says, I, I came, the only one, no one's gone to heaven except the one that's come down from heaven himself. He, he knows, it's not like he forgot who he was. And that's it. Yep. He, so he, he doesn't need faith uh, because he knows. Uh, yeah. But he demonstrated faithfulness. Uh, so I think those are the two ways to understand that. So either you have to think of it as uh, it's it's a believing in Jesus uh, or it's uh, it's a faithfulness of Christ. Right. Um, Completely agree. Yeah. Let's see if anybody. Yeah. And the one verse while you're looking at that, the one verse that you were uh, discussing where he was uh, asking that if there was any way the cup could pass from him, you know, that's that's the that's the flesh part. You know the part of him that that would even be able to have any kind of fear of the of the pain and anguish that he's about to face um but of course that didn't win out and to me that's an example for us of of the struggle that we have you know because all always 100 percent god he was also uh you know in the flesh so he experienced the same things that we experience i think it's definitely a model but it doesn't mean that he had to have faith yeah. He, he relied on his uh, his uh, omnipresent, omnipotent uh, part yeah. uh, to get through that hard time and was ministered to by the angels. So it's a wonderful well, thing. I'd like to, uh, um, I, I would like to speak to the, the chat room and the, the wrenches in the chat room for, for a moment. I, I wanted to say this before we started and I forgot, but uh, if, if you're a moderator in the chat room, thank you for being here. Thank you for taking on that responsibility and i'd like you to exercise it um hendrick says let's try to see being very polite the way he says it. he says let's try to keep say on topic that's being discussed and uh so yeah one thing the moderators try to steer everybody keep them focused on this study and then the other thing is let's not allow anybody to get ugly if anybody wants to disagree, fine. What disagreement is fine. Uh, I want to hear disagreements because maybe I'm wrong about something, and and but I, I I want someone to be polite, not just to me, but to every to each other. So if someone is being ugly and not being polite to others, even though they they're, they're disagreeing but not doing it in a nice, kind, polite way, then uh, the moderators please uh, take care of that. I can't I can't handle it while I'm doing this. Okay, so, um, all right, brother, uh, let's go to the next verse then. It's uh, verse 20. Uh, I'm, I'm at the end of verse 22. It says, for there is no difference for all of sin and come short of the glory of God. Okay, obviously, this is one of the greatest verses, most important verses in the Bible. Anybody, yes. an evangelist, we all have this verse in our in our toolbox yep. for evangelism. So give me your thoughts. For there is no difference for all of sin and come short of the glory of God. Brother yep. All people, everyone has sinned. There's no difference. Rich or, rich or poor, tall, short, thin, fat, red-haired, freckled, freckled face, whatever. Um, we've all sinned. Even if we think we don't, it makes it very clear here. I'm going to believe the, believe, believe the Bible instead of someone else who thinks they haven't sinned. Here's where it is. We come short of the glory of God. That's the secondary point that ties into the first one. We've all sinned. And also because of that, that's the reason why we fall short of the glory of God. There was no, there's no one higher than God. There's no sin in him. So we fall short of his glory because of that fact. Okay. So, so far we know that the, the law is the purpose is not to uh, give us a method to work our way to heaven. Correct. The law is there to show us the futility yeah. of works for salvation. 
Uh, is, the law should make us understand that it's impossible. I throw up my hands. I surrender. I give up. I can't do it. I need help. Save me. God, please help me. And that's what God wants us all to come to that, that point where we realize I need to be saved. I need, and how do I get saved? Well, there's a savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, and then the other thing, of course, is that if someone wants to be self-righteous and act like, well, that doesn't apply to me. I'm perfect. I'm so good. Well, this verse says, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All means every person without exception, only the God man, Jesus Christ. The only exception to this. Amen. And now I know that um, some people, they like to get on their high horse and, and, and ignore their sins and point out everybody else's. Oh, yes. <laughs> like, oh, yes. Uh, it's like um, they think that because they haven't, you know, they can't remember. Oh, I don't lie to people as a rule, or not, at least not very often. I'm, I hardly lie anymore. And, <laughs> have committed adultery and so they 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 uh kind of condense it down so that it's it's so uh easy legalism oh, yeah. it's easy to say well i didn't steal anything and i didn't commit adultery i just certainly didn't murder anybody didn't but rape that, anybody but but that's why jesus said it's not just your actions it's even your thoughts even if you have a bad thought who hasn't had a bad thought brother luke yeah. Uh, so we need, everybody has to come to this point where they realize I've sinned. Now, I know that some people sin more than others, and we have our different proclivities. Some people have a particular sin that you may not have any interest in that sin, but they may not have any interest in your particular sins that you love. But uh, uh, it's not the type of sin. It's not the amount of our sins. It's just the fact that everyone is a sinner. Amen. And we all fall short of the glory of God. What do you think of that term, fall short of the glory of God, brother? Um, hmm, fall short. Uh, we, don't, we don't measure up. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's just another way of saying it. Um, I've never thought about what I've thought about the term itself. That's interesting. Um, but to me, it just means that his glory is so great and we don't have his glory. We're not able to even accomplish that. We need help with it. And because of the first verse, uh, as far as uh, saying that we're all guilty of the same thing, there is no difference. Um, we cannot measure up to the glory of God. I don't know if that's what you're looking for, but I, 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 that, I have to think more about that. What do I think about? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm uh, short of your, idea, your idea of measuring up, that's a good illustration of it. Okay. A lot of people like to uh, use the illustration of archery and they say, oh, yeah, you're missing the mark, you know, you're, you're, yeah. you're you have a bull, you, a bullseye is what you want to hit. And you, if you don't hit a bullseye, you miss that mark. They say, that's what sin is missing the mark. So when you fail, you've missed the mark. And uh, who can hit a bullseye every single time? Uh, but I look at it like this. Um, Jesus uh, not only paid for the sins of the whole world. Right. But he lived a perfect sinless life. And he gives us credit for it as believers. We get credit for his perfect life. So his perfect life without sin is the standard that everybody has to match if they want to not fall short of the glory of God. The, the glorious standard of sinless perfection that Jesus showed us, try it. That's what you've got to do. If you think you, you, you can get saved through your own efforts or you don't need Jesus or, you know, you're going to go before God and say, judge my life. I'm so good. You know, the standard is you've got to be perfect to Jesus without one bad thought or deed or anything in your whole life from first breath to last breath, never one missed missing the mark. And that's the standard is the glory of God's established by Jesus. Perfect life. Amen. I'll go ahead and take uh, what Christ offered rather than that. <laughs> Another thing that occurred to me is you could also use the uh, balance and scales as a way to do it. I get where yeah. you're coming from now. 
Yeah. yeah. So if you have God on, on one side of the scale and, and us on the other, um, we, it's nowhere close. Mm -hmm. if, if, if glory is the, the benchmark. Well, uh, I've heard the scale, um, uh, matter of fact, Islam says your, your good deeds and your bad deeds are put on a scale and it's measured. Right. Right. Uh, yeah. That's the thing that's used all the time. Yeah. Uh, but the, uh, the problem with the scale is that uh, let's say this is, this is good and this is bad. And you think that all you got to do is make the scale tilt that way. If you just have one more ounce of goodness than badness. Yeah. And you tilt that way, right? That's right. Yeah. That means that that's not like you expecting to you you get an A plus when the when you got a fifty one percent on the test. Yeah. You know. Yeah. No, fifty one percent is not not going to meet God's standards. That's failure. Yeah. Yeah. And, and and plus, all the good deeds you put on this scale have no value. They have no weight to them at all. But one sin is heavy. It tilts the scale. Yeah. Amen. Um, so if someone was going to try to use a scale or a grading system, you know, you think, well, I'm 95% good. 95% is an A on a, in an exam. Yep. No, this is a, this is a, um, a, a not a, uh, pass fail, like a 50, 50 test. It's not a 95%. It's a hundred percent. You got to be a hundred percent. Right pass this test so we need everybody to understand the impossibility and uh, jesus said it and paul said it he, james said it he says if you don't if, if you follow the entire law and fail in one point you you're guilty of all paul says if you want to be judged by the law you have to do it perfectly if you put yourself under the law if you want to be uh, follow that as a means of salvation you're putting yourself under a curse because because it's impossible, so you're cursed, doomed to failure. Yeah. Um, setting yourself up to fail, actually. Yeah. yeah. You're giving, you're, it's absolutely not only setting yourself for the possibility of failure, but the insurance. <laughs> certainty yeah. of failure. Certain, yeah. Yes. I agree with that. Okay. Uh, let's go to verse, uh, let me look at that verse 23 in the Amplified, see how, if it changes at all. Yeah. It says, uh, uh, there is no distinction since all have sinned and continually fall short of the glory of God. Mm. Continually, they add. Mm. I like that. Yeah. Uh, a lot of times the Amplified really does amplify it in a wonderful way where it, it really gives you a really, really um, uh, great way of understanding. It's very helpful. Wow. Uh, let's go to the back to KJV verse 24. It says... Uh, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Mm. Mm. All right. I'm going to put a period there, brother. Uh, I'm with you. Yeah, uh, Give me your thoughts on that. Yeah, here it is. And this is a beautiful verse as well. Being justified freely by his grace, not of us, through the redemption that is in, in Christ Jesus, um, in nothing else. The only way we're going to get it is through through Christ Jesus. It's in him, and it's of him as well. So uh, a couple of verses earlier, it used the term of, and now now he's using the term in. It's beautiful. Uh -huh. Yeah. How's in everybody in the Jesus. chat room? Everybody getting along in the chat room and uh, participating? Are, are you listening and responding to our, our thoughts here? Let me see. Okay. Um, Valerie right. said. Valerie um, said yeah. um, okay. I'm going to read it in the KJV and then the Amplified so you can see the difference here and how the, this is very clear. It's not like there are some verses in the KJV that are a little bit hard to understand. Sure. And that's when the Amplified really can be helpful. Yeah. Uh, or discussing it among believers like we're doing. We're discussing it. And if there's something that's, uh, we're not amply sure we can throw it, kick it back and forth and try to figure it out. Yes, sir. Amplified is doing the same kind of a thing for us. So let's compare this and see it. It says being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Amen. Now Amplified says it this way and being justified 
that is declared free of the guilt of sin, made acceptable to God and granted eternal life as a gift by his precious undeserved grace. Woo. Redemption, the payment for our sin, which is provided in Christ Jesus. What do you All think? Right. I love it. Uh, yeah. I, mean, I haven't looked at the Amplify that much, so you're you're, you're showing me a, a possibly another tool that I can use for my studies. So I, I, uh, I love it, and uh, but I just always want to, when I, if I recommend something, uh, I always want everybody to understand, here's the disclaimer. You're showing it. The KJV has to be uh, the litmus test. If, right. if the KJV says, that, for example, repent and be baptized, yeah. And the other, and then you look at the amplified or NIV or anything else, and it says, "Repent from your sins and be baptized." Yeah. No, no. KJV doesn't say of your sins. No, and that's, that's not what I mean. Error, the big error that you find in the other translations is they're adding that in your sin. They're yeah. redefining what repent means. Yeah, and a lot of people, are, unfortunately, are not going to go to heaven because of that trend, that uh, interpretation as well. Yeah. Okay, uh, verdict parlant, uh, veridic. I'm sorry if I'm not pronouncing it right. I think it's French, but it says, Sin City Preacher, if the Ten Commandments do not apply to Gentiles, what can, can be considered sin today? Uh, okay, uh, Jesus said, hey, you give the, the law, but the way I'm going to explain the law to you is love God, with your, all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. Love each other. It's love. And that's all you got to do is love each other. Now, if I'm having hateful thoughts against someone, that would be a sin. And not just because I went out and, and got angry and, and physically assaulted someone, attacked them, but if I even attacked them with my thoughts, as Jesus said, then, then that would be a sin because that's not love. Obviously, love. You know, if we can't say whatever we're thinking and doing, it, it could be classified as some form of love. Then you better question and say, hey, uh, this is not the way God wants me to think. This yeah. is not the way God wants me to act. And therefore, it would be sin. But very deep, very deep here, here's what's really important. We shouldn't even be thinking about sin. We should be thinking about Jesus. If I'm thinking about sin right now, I'm not sinning because I'm, to, I'm, I'm with the brethren. We're having fellowship. We're in the scriptures. We're talking about Jesus. The last thing on my mind is some sinful thing I'm thinking about or, or doing some sinful thing. Yes. So the whole point is if you don't want to sin and we don't, but all our sins already paid for. Remember that. So it's, it's not a sin issue because Jesus paid for our sins. It's a son issue. If we stay focused on the son of God, the last thing we're going to be doing is thinking about sinning if we're always thinking about Jesus. I mean, your mind has, has to have one thought. And, you know, you can't have two thoughts, one thought at a time. You can take a thought and replace it with another one, but you can't have two thoughts. You're thinking of one thing. Think of Jesus and you won't be thinking of sin. That's a beautiful point there, Brother Luke. I'm, I'm going to sign up for that newsletter. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So the next verse, uh, uh, okay, uh, verse 25. Well, let me read 24 and continue into 25 so the thought is more flowing. It says, mm -hmm. being justified freely by his grace, but through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God hath set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. Okay, we'll stop. We'll stop it there, even though it's not a period yet. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. What's your thoughts on verse 25, brother? Well, my first, my, one of my favorite words in this verse is forbearance, because that's, that's what he's doing. We're getting a forbearance. So in, in uh, financial terms, like if you have school loan, and you can't pay it back, so you get a forbearance from from the from the government to give you give you some time to figure out how to take care of the debt. But in this case, um, coming from God, 
we don't ever have to figure out how to pay the debt back. It's made it clear in the verses leading up to this that for the remission of sins, it's of God. God's the one that forgives, and it's all put on Jesus. It's through Jesus. This is what these, verse are these verses are leading up to. So, um, And also it says that uh, God hath set forth to be the perpetuation through faith. Again, it's stating uh, that's how we get there is through faith. In his blood is shed blood on the cross and declares righteousness for the remission of sins. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah. Well, beautiful. I mean, it's hard to find anything that Paul wrote that isn't profound. And it, I mean, as I said, we could take almost any verse and we could do an hour on a verse if we really wanted to dissect it and go, go into it. If yeah. there's that much theology in every verse there. But um, John Wayne said he doesn't get it. I don't know. Uh, he says he doesn't get it. Who's that? John Wayne. I don't get John one. Wayne in the chat room says he doesn't get it. So I want to make sure if he if he really doesn't get it. John John Wayne, tell me more about what you don't get because uh, you need to be more specific. Talk about a lot of things. So I'm not sure what you're exactly referring to. Let us know, and I'll try to help. But uh, there you go. Here's, here's okay. Here's the verse is. Uh, I see it. Okay. Whom God hath set forth. So God, uh, God has ordained this. God is the one that is behind it to be for the purpose of a propitiation. Now, propitiation, I think it's only twice in the Bible, or maybe three times. And um, you know, one time it says he's the propitiation for our sins and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. And uh, here we have propitiation and propitiation. It's important to understand it. It, it means that uh, like, well, Jesus said propitiation in this way. It is finished. Okay. Brother Cripps, there's nothing you have to do. Jesus did it all. Amen. Nothing required on your part. Jesus did it all. It's finished. Anything that was required for salvation, Jesus did it. It's finished. Done. So religions tell us, do, do, do. Jesus said, done. It's yep. done. Yep. That's propitiation. Um, paid in full. Satisfactory pay payment. Yep. There's nothing, else, there's nothing else required. Yep. The debt is completely wiped out. Expunged, removed. It's a powerful, powerful word. Word. Mm, sure is. Good stuff. Okay, John, I, it gets. I get. It's a great story and all, and a good way to live. But still, I don't know what you're referring to, John. Maybe you have a dialogue going on with someone else in the chat room. I don't get it. Okay. Well, wow. what you're referring to. Uh, if you have a question directly for us, why don't you do this chat room? If you're listening now. <laughs> I don't think I bet you half the people don't, are not even listening to us, brother. But that's unfortunate. But if you are listening to us now, if you have a direct question or comment directed to us, put it in all caps. Shout it out, okay? It's not going to offend me if it's in caps. I look uh, that way. I'll be able to identify it very quickly. If there's all caps, I know you want me to address your statement or your question, okay? Amen. So that'll be the new policy, okay? Uh, but let's look at this. Uh, oh, let me go a little further. It says, um, through faith. So the propitiation, this is, is through faith in his blood. Yep. Believing that his shed blood, which resulted in his death, the wages of sin is death. So he couldn't just be beaten and tortured and shed blood, but live. No, he had to actually be so bad he had to suffer death. We have faith in his blood atonement his blood payment um love that word atonement yeah absolutely but here's the difference i, I learned this from uh, aaron budgen uh some people might disagree but i'm i'm inclined to believe what aaron budgen says he was uh grew up as a jewish in a jewish family he, he was studied to be uh, a rabbi, a rabbi. Yeah. And um, so he has family and tradition and, and uh, uh, rabbinical studies. And then he became a Christian. 
And he's, he's 777 New Covenant on my uh, channel that I recommend. If you go to the right-hand side of my homepage, you'll see that. Go to his channel, and, and you'll, he, he's one of my favorite Bible teachers. But I will do I that. From Aaron Budgen, the distinction between atonement and propitiation, most people interchange them. They, they, they just think it means the same thing. But atonement applied to Old Testament, where they cover the blood. The, 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 the altar is covered with blood. You're assembling, your, your sins are covered up. God can't see him right now. It's a temporary covering. Oh, look, Renee's here. There's hey, guys. Thanks for waiting up for me. Renee. Sweetheart. Thank you for covering, man. Yeah. Uh, so happy to hear that you were scheduled to be here. I, I, I was going to wait till after the show, but it's 35 degrees, and the pain was so bad in my bad leg and hip, I couldn't even think straight. And I, was, I hate that because then my pacing's just short, you know? Yeah, of course. But, uh, I better go get it. So please yeah. forgive me. No, no, you're forgiven. There's no need to forgive. We have Love you guys. Hey, everybody. I was going to do a video today just to tell people how much I love and appreciate them because they have just given me such purpose for my life. Amen. Okay, where are we, man? Where, uh, where are we on Romans? Sister, sister, yeah, we, we haven't made progress, but we've, we've gone uh, from Romans 3.20. We're on oh, you're Romans in Romans 3. Okay. We're Romans 3.20. We started and we're up at 3.25 now. Okay, so Romans 3. Let me let me catch up with you guys. So you're at 325. 325. Let me answer this uh, point here in the chat room here. Someone's yeah. asking something here. Uh, uh, says, uh, are the studies every Wednesday? Yes, uh, Valerie. Uh, every Wednesday, 9.30 p.m. Uh, Eastern time. Uh, and we go about 90 minutes to 11 p.m. And we also have our uh, Sunday program at, at uh, that's 5 p.m. Eastern. It's a, our Sunday church, church program. Okay, uh, but now that we have Sister Renee here, uh, um, well, why don't, you, uh, why don't you read? Do you have it in front of you, the scriptures, Romans 3.25? Yeah, I, I do. Uh, right. Also, I just uploaded a video to let people know we were live right now. Oh, okay. me, uh, we Good. might have some people coming. Well, that means probably some more people will be joining us soon. Absolutely. I love it. Uh, uh, you know what? I just want to tell you guys, Jason and uh, Brother Luke, what we do on Wednesday and Sunday, some for some people, that is the only fellowship they have. They do not, they cannot find a true gospel church. Boy, isn't prophecy true about in the last days, the love of many would wax cold. Yes. God, Jesus would not find faith on this earth. Mm. Find plenty of religion, oh. but not faith. So uh, uh, I, what we do is wonderful because it's helping so many people. And uh, also, I, I think it's a great way to show people that you can disagree on things that aren't the foundation. And we should be have open ears to hear what each other believes on scripture. And so that iron can sharpen iron, but we need to show grace to one another and liberty, freedom to have different thoughts that may go against tradition and then study those things in scripture. And if we can't all come to like mind, we can at least understand each other and why we believe as we do. So I just want to say, I get a lot of messages that what we're doing here helps a lot of people. Amen. So, so uh, you, you wanted me to begin reading at Romans 25, I mean, 325? Yeah, just give us your thoughts in Romans 325 and we'll just uh, continue as we've been going. But with your thoughts. Uh, well, uh, the, this verse is clearly saying that Jesus's death, uh, his blood was for our sins. He is the offering to pay for our sin debt, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. Now, a lot of people try to use this verse to say, see, only your past sins are covered. Nonsense. All your sins were future when Christ died. The sins that are past is referring to the sins before the cross committed by the world, such as the Romans having pagan gods and being into idolatry. He forgives that. They were in ignorance. Also, sins uh, that even Israel committed before the cross. Uh, the animal sacrifices were merely a shadow of this propitiation 
that is permanent for past, present, and future. So I didn't want anybody to think it means that only your past sins are uh, forgiven. If that was the case, then everybody should wait till they're almost dead before they get saved to make sure they're all <laughs> No, thank you, Renee. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh, um, when you came here, I was in the middle of explaining explaining it myself, but I'm, I wanted to make the point, and I'm urging everybody to go to Aaron Budgeon's channel and watch his video on this subject, but there, he, he makes a distinction between atonement and propitiation. And according to Aaron Budgeon, I think he's right. He knows more about this than we do because, as I said, his background, uh, studying to be a rabbi. But I think when we think about it, we'll probably agree. Atonement is a good word for um, uh, the, the Old Testament, what was going on. Uh, it means covering up the sins. Okay, it's like, let's just put a blanket over it, cover it up, you know. Uh, but they're not really removed. They're not paid for. When you, when you sacrifice an animal, it's a picture of the future that Jesus would actually someday really pay for them. But I'm so glad you're explaining this, Luke. I'm so glad. It's not covered. They're not covered. They're purged. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, the difference is in the Old Testament, the sins were not really propitiated and paid for. They were just covered up and kind of like, oh, let's not, God's not going to see it for a while, but someday yeah. they'll actually be removed. And that's what happened at the cross. And that's what this word propitiation means, is that they're completely erased, paid for, paid in full, uh, finished. It's done. Nothing's required of you. Jesus did it all. And uh, it'll never be, they'll never be brought up again. Cast your sins as far as the east is from the west. Your sins and iniquities, I'll remember no more. We're at that point, finally. I, lo I love what you said about, I'm glad that you said the, the bit about them being covered up for a while to make the difference between the two things, because there are people out there that don't understand that the sacrifices did not uh, pay for sin. It had to be Christ's blood. Just because they did the sacrifices, no one was perfect. They didn't, There was one person that did it perfectly. That did not save them. The blood of goats and the blood of bulls and all that did not save them. It had to be Christ's blood. So I love that you said that very clearly. Both of you about the covering it up part yeah. was for, it was a temporary thing before the cross. Hey, and by the way, Brother Luke, the Roman Catholic Church kept this truth hidden. That's why they made it a death sentence. If anybody owned a Bible, it was considered illegal because they wanted people to think they were maintaining salvation through the sacraments and therefore needed the church. And so when, if the fact was known that the sins of everyone were purged, not just covered until you can do something else to keep maintaining it, but purged, they would have been free. And so church, that church kept people in bondage, hiding this very important truth you're, you're specifying right now. Yeah. Oh, uh, hi, Celine. She wants a shout out. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Renee's initial uh, thoughts and point uh, about the past sins, uh, that's very important for people to understand. You're absolutely correct how people will misuse that verse. But what I'm doing, sister, you know me, uh, uh, I'm a KJV firstist. I use the KJV as the scriptures, but I like to look at the Amplified alongside it because the Amplified amplifies it like we're amplifying. We're adding our thoughts to try to further explain it. And sometimes it's helpful. But in the Amplified, let's see how it says this. Uh, verse 25, whom God displayed publicly before the eyes of the world as a life-giving sacrifice of atonement and reconciliation or propitiation by his blood, to be received through faith. This was to demonstrate his righteousness. Oh, wait, am I going on? No, no. This was to demonstrate his righteousness, which demands punishment for sin, because in his forbearance, that is his deliberate restraint, he passed over the sins previously committed before Jesus' crucifixion. Okay, so the point that they're making there about the previous sins, that's a, a valid point way of expressing it, but the way that people uh, use it to say that, well, only your past sins are paid for, for but from this point forward now that you're a Christian, you got to stop sinning. That's the wrong way of understanding that. All right? Yeah. Okay. 
All right, Renee, any more thoughts on that before we go to the next verse? I'm ready. Okay. Uh, verse 26. To declare, I say, at this time his righteousness, that he might be just, and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Okay. Uh, so, uh, in, in, to declare, you know, God is making this declaration. Make, he, let's make sure everybody understands declares the Lord. I say at this time, his righteousness that might be just and the justifier of which uh, believeth in Jesus. Uh, all right, Brother Cripps, verse 26. What's your thoughts on that? Um, I really don't have anything to add to what you just said. Uh, uh, you, you made it very clear. It is declaring, so it's a declarative statement. I always think of the, um, the old uh, criers that used to sell uh, newspapers, you know, yelling out. Uh, pick, pick it up. Uh, pick them. Get them while they're hot. Pick it up. That's de declaring. Um, I say at this time, his righteousness. Is, okay, so to me, he's he's restating everything to put a finer point on it. He might just uh, the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Again, stating how we get there is by believing in Jesus, not by anything else. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, uh, Renee. The next verse you have. Uh, Want to elaborate on that? Yeah, I want to say to declare his righteousness, by the way, God's righteousness, yep. uh, not our own righteousness. That's nope. how he declares his righteousness. It's through, he said, do it, declare, I say at this time, his righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of him, which believeth in Jesus. So we're justified, declared righteous because we believe in the just one, Jesus Christ. And it's his righteousness we wear that makes us worthy. That's why our works have nothing to do with it because that's our righteousness and it's not mm -hmm. of ourselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, uh, as I said, in the Amplified, sometimes it elaborates a little bit and it is helpful, but uh, I like the way, I think you'll ever like the way this is expressed here. It says, um, um, it, it was to demonstrate his righteousness at the present time so that he would be just and the one who justifies those who have faith in Jesus and rely co confidently on him as savior. Yes. That's what, that's what, um, you know, a lot of times people get hung up on the words faith and believe and, 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 and that's why I've always liked the words a, a, a Christian is a person who relies completely on Christ for their salvation. A Christian is depending on Jesus. A Christian is trusting Jesus to get to be the one to give them eternal life and get them to heaven. Uh, it's de depend. A Christian depends on Jesus. So I like this. Uh, the The word "rely" to me is a very good way for people to understand what this believing in faith really is. It's a it's a reliance, dependence. All right, brother Luke. I just want to answer a quick question for the viewers. Uh, this is to answer your question. What does the word Calvary mean? Because it says Golgotha. Calvary is the coiny Greek word meaning place of the skull. Not just that it looked like a skull, but it is believed that uh, David buried Goliath's head there, representing the seed of the serpent. So mm -hmm. just wanted to answer what Calvary meant. It's the coiny Greek term meaning place of skull. Same as Golgotha. All right. Well, what I'm wondering is if that's we didn't use that word. Is that somewhere in the scriptures or or is that just a side chat? No, it was just a quick thing and I could answer it real fast. So I went ahead and did it. All right, then. Uh, OK, so verse 27. Where is boasting then? It is excluded by what law of works? Nay, but by the law of faith. I'm going to read the next one together. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Renee? I, I uh, like how he puts, therefore, we conclude. So he says, this is the info, and this is why we conclude it. Uh, let me see here. <clears throat> Where is boasting then? It is excluded. Why is it excluded? Because it's not of yourselves. It's the foundation. It's not based on what you have do done or what you're doing, but it is, it is based on what was already accomplished by Christ. That's why there's no boasting. If it has something to do with you and your performance, 
then you can boast. Hey, I'm saved because Jesus died plus I did this. So where is boasting that it's excluded? By what law? Of works? Nay, but by the law of faith. Uh, Paul always refers to the Old Testament in the book of Habakkuk, I believe, the minor prophet. Uh, it says the just shall live by faith. It was foretold that a better covenant would come. So then Paul continues and says, therefore, we conclude, we've come to this conclusion, this understanding that a man is justified, made righteous, declared righteous by faith without deeds of the law. And now that is not just uh, ritual works. That is all the law, including the Ten Commandments. Because Paul clearly says that the law was given so the sin, might, the offense might abound and that he did not even know sin until he was told not to covet. Now, that is one of the ten. So it includes all of the law. It's been broken. Now, no one can be justified by it. Mm. Well, let, let me say before Brother Cripps, you talk here, notice in the chat when we have a uh... We have someone new, Stephen, the martyr uh, acts. Uh, uh, I'm, I don't know uh, Stephen, so I hope everybody in the chat room will greet him. Greetings, uh, welcome, and uh, uh, I, I hope you feel welcome and you'll, you'll join us again. Uh, Brother Cripps, well, please tell us what you think of the, those two verses, 27 and 28. Yeah, I mean, I think Renee nailed it, but I'll just add that um, he this is he's ending up the argument here, so he's kind of touching on some of the things. So tonight we started in, in verse twenty, and he's stating again uh, that the uh, we're justified by faith without deeds of the law. So he's he's uh, making that finer point again that it's not the law at all, that it is by faith and faith alone in Jesus Christ. So. Um, I, I, I like when he talks like this too, you know, this uh, kind of interrogative, uh, or is boasting then is it, it is excluded by what law of works? Uh, and then the, uh, declarative, which is no or nay, nay, but by the law of faith, again, referring back to faith as the, as the means by which we are saved through Christ's blood on the cross as a perpetuation of, for sin. Mm -hmm. Amen. All right. Um, verse 28 is one of the, um, let's say, the uh, the tools. Um, when I said the toolbox, we talked about earlier, uh, this is a verse that, uh, you know, any evangelist has in their pocket. And it, like it's one of our used, necessary used tools a lot. We bring this verse up a lot about uh, all fall short of the glory of God, all of sin that comes short of the glory of God. And this one to me, verse 28. Uh, is one of those two. Uh, but let me start with the beginning here. Um, it says in 27, where is boasting then? Of course, that makes me think of Ephesians uh, 2, 8, and 9. Uh, For by grace are we saved through faith, and that not of uh, it, your, it's yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. And here in Romans 327, Paul brings up boasting again. Where is boasting then? It is excluded. So there's two times here. Uh, so I don't think there's any more of the, the words used, but two times Paul talks about us boasting. Now I want everybody to just picture this. Jesus said, there will come a day when people come to me and say, Lord, Lord, look at all the wonderful things we did in your name. And they go on and list their, their good deeds, their great works. And that's what Paul's talking about. Don't think, you, and, and Jesus says, depart from me, workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Your works are iniquity. It, it, it has no value to me because you put your faith in your, your works rather than your faith in me. So um, the idea that we could ever die and go to the judgment and God says, why should I let you into heaven? You start boasting. No, it's excluded. There's no no room for us to ever present our works, which are just filthy rags. Imagine presenting your filthy rags before God and say, this is why you should let me into heaven. Look what I've done. I did this and this and this and this. No, the only plea to God at a judgment, if you had to make a plea, is what I said earlier, the blood of Jesus. Mm. He paid for my sins with his shed blood, his death on the cross. That's the only plea. I boast only in Jesus' love for me that he died for me. 
Uh, so boasting, anything that we add not only ruins it, if we add any of our righteousness to the righteousness of God is spoiled. It's of no value. Uh, but it's, it's, uh, it's magic to think that you could present your works to, to God instead of the righteousness of Christ. So here it says, uh, boasting is excluded. In other words, don't think that you can go before God and boast about your works. And then he says, by what law? Um, by by what law of works? Well, of course, that's what everybody thinks that the that, uh, the system of salvation is uh, the laws you follow with good works. And uh, uh, but Paul says no. There's another law. The the only law that applies is the law of faith. In other words, it's a law that you have to have faith. Amen. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. So um, that's the law. And uh, and then we get to this point. He said he said in verse twenty, also. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall be no flesh justified in his sight. Very so, good. one thing about Paul, um, we said in the introduction to this whole book, we talked a little bit about who Paul was and and the setting of it, of the book. But uh, Paul was, I think, he's by far the most learned of any of the writers. Uh, he was a real scholar <clears throat> and he, a great intellect, and, and, and he's very systematic. You notice he said, therefore, in verse 20. Now he says, therefore, again, in verse 20. Yeah. What he's doing is he's presenting us something, and then he's saying, therefore. He presents the case. He says, therefore. It's like a fantastic attorney that's presenting a, a case, an argument, and, and, and very systematically. Yeah. And that's why I think he wrote Hebrews too, because Hebrews it's the same kind of thing. Uh, yeah, so we talked says, about that. And I agree. Yeah. So he says, therefore, we conclude the conclusion to this whole chapter here, this whole portion of scripture we've been talking about. We conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Now, mm -hmm. Sister Renee, I have a question for you. Yes, sir. Have you ever been asked, I should say, how many times have you been asked, well, where does it say you're saved by faith alone? Show me a verse that says you're saved by faith alone. Well, it says without. You're saved by faith without, period. Yeah. It's this not ourselves. Here, it's, I mean, just because the word alone isn't in there, it doesn't matter. It's still worded. The concept's there. Faith without anything. Faith without. Faith without everything. Faith without works. Faith without deeds. Faith yeah. without you. It's all Jesus. Because uh, a lot of times they say, the only time you see faith alone is when it says that your faith alone is dead. Uh, yeah, but having dead faith just means it's not profitable to others or in the service of God. It doesn't mean you're not saved. Amen. Yeah, but this verse here is Good the one. answer to the people. Show me a verse that says you're saved by faith alone. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by, just by faith right. alone. Without the deeds Without, of the law. Right. Okay. There is right. nothing else you can add to that. But, but they will try to say that the deeds of the law are the ritual ceremonial deeds. And that's not true. Yeah. Paul yeah. makes that clear when he mentions the thou shalt not covet. Yes. But, but also, this verse uh, is obviously serves that purpose of saying. Great hey, one. But any time in the bible and 99 times in in the book of john i think we have the words the word faith or believe 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 and, and it doesn't say anything else it says uh it says uh john three sixteen. uh for god so loved the world he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him uh shall not perish but have everlasting life and it, that's all it says is believe Acts sixteen thirty one too what must i do to be saved believe yeah. But the point is, when it says believe, and there's nothing else mentioned. That's right. It's it's saying believe is all that's required. Right. It, says, it says faith, and nothing else is mentioned. It's saying faith alone, because nothing right. else is included. You're absolutely right. But yeah. that's a good verse to show him, because it says faith without, period. Faith without the deeds of the law. Yes. You got it. It's a great verse. 28. Um, okay. But by... Uh, okay, let's go. Let me That's read that. Twice, man. He says it twice. He says it a couple lines up and he says it again. Yes. I want to see how it phrases it in the Amplify here. 27 and 28. Let me read it. It says, 
then what becomes of our boasting it is excluded, entirely ruled out, banished. On what principle? On the principle of good works? No, but on the principle of faith. For we maintain that an individual is justified by faith, distinctly apart from works of the law, that is the observance of, of, of which has nothing to do with justification, that is being declared free of the guilt of sin and made acceptable to God. And you know what else, Luke? When they say works, they forget that trying to not sin is a work of the law. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt, that, that's a work of the law. So abstaining from sin is works of righteousness. When it says good works, they think giving to charity, paying time. No, uh, abstaining from sin is also good works or deeds. Mm -hmm. And they still, because they've tried to find a way to still add that. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad it's it's being said several different ways. Yeah. Well, I'd like you to give us your thoughts on something that we talked about before you joined us. And uh, when we're talking about someone asked, well, what I made the point, look, Paul's talking about the law and he, he's specifically referring to the laws of Moses given to Israel, never to the Gentile world. And but why is he bringing up the law when he's talking to Romans, all Gentiles? It's because the false teacher is coming in and trying to tell everybody you've got to follow the laws of Moses. So he's trying. That's why he has to talk about the law. And uh, but the question was, well, then, OK, then then what it took for us today? What is sin? And I answered it. I'd like you answer. How would you, for us today, how would you define sin for us today? Uh, missing the mark of God's standard of perfection. Because you have to be perfect to enter heaven. That's why your works can't achieve that in any way. Uh, his standard is perfect. Whatsoever is not of faith is sin. If you worry about a bill or if you doubt at all, that, that's not of faith and that is sin. Uh, the thoughts of foolishness is sin, uh, pride, a uh, sin of omission, not praying the way we should, not anything that makes us, uh, fall short of God's perfection. And people don't realize God's standard for heaven is perfection. That's why flesh and blood cannot enter the kingdom. It cannot inherit the kingdom. That's why you must be born again. Uh, so you have that new spirit and a new body that is without sin. But people seem to think that the flesh is somehow changed and it's not. So um, I think it's important to define what sin is. You're absolutely right, Luke. And it is anything that miss sin means to miss the mark, missing the mark of God's perfection. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll tell you, if we're in about a bill of sin, then I, <laughs> I, yeah, because it's not of faith. My past, whatever is not of faith. Yeah. Is sin. Yeah. So technically, even trying to work for salvation is sinning, because it's not of faith. Because it says the law is not of faith, flat out. I don't know where that is, but type it in. It's there. The hmm. law is not of faith. Why is it not of faith? Because it's a it's something you're doing. Amen. Faith is to trust, to be convinced that what God promised is able to perform. Yeah. Well, you're, you're, the point you made there about uh, if someone is working for their salvation, that that is a sin. That's a very, very, very important point for someone to understand. I realized that when um, Brother uh, Daniel uh, was explaining this verse, uh, I've always taken this verse a particular way. Um, to, the, to the man who worketh not, but believeth on the one who justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted as righteousness. I've always used the verse to say, look, this is telling us if there's a person who has never done one religious good work in his whole life, zero, worketh not, then his faith, it makes him righteous, even though he did no work at all, okay? But I heard Daniel explain it, and I think that this is also, uh, I'm not sure which way is the intended meaning, but he, he said, uh, if to the man who worketh not, or in other words, the man who is not working for their salvation, in other words, you better not be working for your right. salvation because if you are working for your salvation, you can't get it. So That's right. Someone who's not working for salvation, but believe us on the one who justified the ungodly. Right. He doesn't save those trying to be saved. He saves those that trusted he did save them. And I found the verse here. It's Galatians 3.12. It flat out says it, Luke. 
and the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. Galatians 3, 12. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good. Good. Okay. Uh, I forgot what I was saying, but uh, let's go on to the next verse. Verse 29 says, is he the God of the Jews only? Is he not also of the Gentiles? Yes, mm -hmm. of the Gentiles also, seeing it is one God which shall justify the circumcision by faith and uncircumcision through faith. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, I'm going to have to look at that uh, in the Amplified, see what they say. But, Renee, uh, particularly in verse 30, but 29 and 30, give us your thoughts on that, please. All right. Is he the God of the Jews only? Is he not also of the Gentiles? Yes, of the Gentiles also, seeing it is one God which shall justify the circumcision by faith and uncircumcision through faith. So he's just saying that the same gospel is for all nations. There's not two different gospels that save that everybody is saved by faith. The Jews can't be saved by their laws or observances either. That mm. the only way to salvation is being justified by faith. That's the circumcision and the uncircumcision, the Jews and the Gentiles. There it is. Mm -hmm. Okay. I love that it's stated again here about the Jews and Gentiles. It's stated clearly yet again. I don't know how people get this twisted. It's for all. They may want to separate these two from each other and, and, and keep it separated. It's for everyone. It's not just for the Jews. It's not just for the Gentiles. It makes it very, very clear. Mm -hmm. It is one God. Again, it makes it clear. Hmm. Um, all right. Let me see if I can explain this. Uh, is he the God of the Jews only? Is he not also? of the Gentiles. Yes, of the Gentiles also. That doesn't require really any explanation. He he just wants to understand that there's one God, the God of, of, of all for all. <laughs> and, and now it says seeing it is one God. Okay. And now that you understand there's just one God yeah. which shall justify the circumcision, the Jewish people, following the Mosaic laws uh, by faith. And uncircumcision, which just means the Gentiles the, who don't get circumcised through faith. But here's the uh, interesting thing, and uh, I don't know if you if you uh, made the distinction, Renee or or uh, Cripps or not. But it says justify the circumcision or, or the, the Jewish people by faith, and the uncircumcision, the, the Gentiles, through faith. So one it says is justified by faith. The other is justified through faith, and I'll read the Amplified. It makes a distinction, but uh, I, I want your thoughts on this. It, it says, uh, oops, um, or is he the God of the Jews only? Is he not also the God of the Gentiles who are not given the law? Yes, of the Gentiles also, since indeed it is one and the same God who will justify the circumcised by faith, which began with Abraham and the uncircumcised through their newly acquired faith. Uh, that's how, that's the distinction that they, they make there. Uh, and, but I'm not sure, I'm not really confident uh, why the, this, we have one, it says by faith, the other says through faith. Any thoughts on that? He's doubling up in my opinion. He's, he's just he's just making it clear and saying it two different ways. They mean the same thing. Yep. Right? Yep. Well, that gets us back to the question then. Uh, uh, there is a distinction, I think, in, in Ephesians uh, 2.8. For by grace are we saved through faith. Yo, and, absolutely. Yeah. So there is, there is a clear... Um, so by grace, it means that's... Uh, that's the methodology that God's using. It's done by him, his graciousness. He only because God. Oh, I'm sorry. I get what you're asking now. Okay. Yeah. 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 So only because God is being gracious, it's by his graciousness, but it's through faith. So the mechanism that we yeah. receive it. The, faith the is the vehicle by, which we get. By, by being gracious, but the right. way that we receive it, the means of receiving it is through faith. Right. So by and through have a, an important, there's an important distinction there. Yes, sir. In this verse, these verses here, 
I'm not sure if I can understand it that way. When it says there, the, uh, the, the, uh, the, um, okay, it says uh, the circumcision is justified by faith and the uncertain circumcision through faith. They're so, I, the same thing, I think. Is it? Yeah. I think they're just saying that the that the Jews are justified by faith, and then the Gentiles are also justified by faith. Okay. Well, the verse before he's making that making that clear about being yeah. Jews and Gentiles. So all he's doing is saying, whether you're uncircumcised or circumcised, is done by the same thing, it's justified I, by faith and through faith. I love cool. I love uh, the last verse here in the chapter. Yes. Okay, uh, let me ask you here. I'm gonna I read that again in the Amplified to see if you think that this is uh, a, a distinction that we need to understand, or or is this, you said it's it's really saying the same thing, even though there's two different words. It's saying that uh, uh, since indeed it is one and the same God who will justify the circumcised by faith, which began with Abraham. So the, what they're inserting there is that say by faith, which was uh, began with Abraham. That's their distinction. And the uncircumcised through their newly acquired faith. Uh, so that's that's the only distinction that, that they make in that. Okay. Uh, but uh, I might be making more of it than there I should be. I think you are. Okay. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, it's good to break things down, though. Sometimes yeah, yeah. it's stuff if we don't. But I don't really think it means anything different. I think, I think it's just saying both are saved by faith. Yeah. Okay. I Let's read that, this last verse that you love so much. It says, okay. do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid. Yea, we establish the law. Okay, sister. Do we make the law void through faith? No. We establish it. We have put the true standards of the law way up here where they belong. We are saying you can't be justified by this law. Mm. We establish the law as beyond something that humans can keep or fulfill perfectly in thought, word, and deed. So uh, by trusting in Christ, we actually do establish the law. We establish it at the level of, of height that God's perfection is. Uh, we realize uh, that we fall short of it. So we keep God's standards high. We don't bring them down to think that we are actually keeping the law. We don't bring those standards down. We establish that law. Right. Uh, so it, it doesn't mean, um, no, we keep the law, but the law of faith. Uh, and, you know, everybody's always sending me stuff on obedience and the law. None of us tell people not to keep God's commandments. None. We tell them, don't trust in you doing it. You don't get credit for failure at keeping the law. You don't get graded on a curve for your failed attempts at keeping God's law perfectly mm -hmm. because we established the law it, just like Jesus said. He said, you have heard it said, but I say you have heard it said that if you, uh, uh, you know, do not commit adultery. But I say if you even look at a woman with lust, you, you've already uh, committed it. So he established the law. And so we we conclude that we cannot be justified by works of the law. We establish that law. We keep it up here where it belongs and, and not bring What do you call it, uh, Brother Luke? Easy legalism? Mm -hmm. Where you lower the standards to think that you keep it mm -hmm. and, you, and you deceive yourself. Man says he has not sinned. He deceived himself and the truth isn't in him. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, all right. Very good. Uh, Brother Cripps, uh, can you say any more about that last verse? Well, not really. <laughs> no, I, what I love that Renee said, she used the word beyond. And and that, that says it all. We're, we're not capable of it. Um, also, I think she, she made a good point of how it's established. So I really don't have anything to add except for praise God. And I'm glad that even though I can't make it on my own, that through faith in what Christ did on the cross in his resurrection, he gives me that free gift which also is made very clear in this passage we've read tonight. So that's it. Thank you. Okay. Um, all right. Yeah, I think Renee nailed it. And it, I think your point uh, agrees with what the Amplified says about it. It's phrased, They phrase it this way. 
do we then nullify the law by this faith, making the law of no effect, overthrowing it? Certainly not. On the contrary, we confirm and establish and uphold the law since it convicts us of all of sin, pointing to the need for salvation. Uh, remember what I said? It, it, and oftentimes, they really amplify it in a way that really makes it very, very clear. I think that's a very way, a good way of pointing it out. That it says no. It, it, it they're reestablishing the fact that what the law does, as Paul said earlier, that that's that uh, makes us understand our need, our, our inability to follow it, our guilt that makes us all understand we all fall short of the glory of God, all of sin, and therefore we need a savior. Amen. We need the savior because there's only one savior. Okay. Only one savior, only one God. All right. So that's the, the conclusion of the chapter, and it's the time that we normally quit. Yeah. So let's let's just take a couple minutes and just go through the chat room and see if there's anything that we need to respond to. Uh, Renee, did you uh, did you send that reply back to Celine about her question? Do you want to talk about it all? Oh yeah. Does Satan himself look? Uh, Satan is not omnipresent, and these hell visits they are so unbiblical. They're based more on Dante's Inferno, which was the perce pagan perception that man has an immortal soul mm -hmm. and that demons are in hell torturing people. That That's not even scriptural. And so all these Bill Weiss, Mary Kay Baxter, they're all work salvationists. They'll all tell you, you've got repent of your sins to be saved and nobody's ever repented of their sins. They got another gospel, so it, which tells me I can't even know if they're saved or even have the Holy Spirit. They didn't test the spirits to see if they be of God. They uh, they come back with uh, lying signs and wonders. And uh, no, I don't believe Satan is there. I, he probably sent some lower demon to give him a vision or something. He's only one place at a time. Uh, and these things only, first of all, many of these, I think people just flat out make up or they had a dream, but they elevate it to vision or out of body experience so that they can be looked at as a special prophet. Uh, Thank you. Thank because you. they're not biblically sound so they need some way to get people to follow and trust them mm. so if they convince you that god used them and they're special uh then you know you need to run from people like that i have seen very few biblical out-of-body experiences or visions very few of them mm. and one person saying this celebrity's in hell and another person saying the same celebrity they saw in heaven on their trip so don't believe either one of them Yes, Either one of them. So, uh, no, I don't believe Satan is there. Could he appear and give somebody a vision? Absolutely. You saw him give Jesus a vision of every kingdom in the world. So, yes, he can do those things. But I doubt he's wasting his time, you know, with some guy in Ohio giving him a tour of hell uh, for 30 days straight. Yeah. You know, what would be the point of that? The, the, Jesus said they got the law and the prophets. Even if somebody did come back from the dead, they wouldn't believe, referring to himself. So they got all the information they need. You don't need, you know what that is? That they used to fill the pews in the 17 and 1800s with nice, gory details. It was like going to a horror movie. Yep. People loved it. They loved it. Uh, Brother Luke and I were talking about that when we were reading Jonathan Edwards, uh, when he was talking about hanging those sinners, dangling them over a string, wouldn't he, Luke? Just I heard that. God just dangling him on a string at any moment. He can just cut that string and drop you into hell. It's just uh, these things, they're not biblical. You check their doctrine completely off. So I, I don't believe one word. Some people make it up to sell books like that Todd Burpo kid. He Thank came you. out and said, my parents told me to say these things. Yep. I didn't see my sister in heaven. They told me to say it to make it look like it was more real. So, you know, uh, it, it, you, 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 I say be open to people having visions and dreams, but God left his word. The perfect has come where it says there will be prophecies. They shall cease when the perfect is come. And I believe that's his uh, finished word put together for us. Uh, everything that we need to know about the future is in that book and revelation of Jesus Christ puts the cherry on the cake of it. It tells us what to look for and what's going to happen. 
So there is no reason. If God says there is a hell and the lost will suffer the second death in the lake of fire, that's all the information we need. We believe him. And I think it's all unbiblical nonsense for people to lift themselves up as a special prophet. And these things start out uh, uh, kind of harmless, but they turn into cults. They turn into cults. We got Chris LaSala building some cabin out in the woods because of his uh, ministry. It scares me because he's got like, you know, the whole, he's supposed to be some great deliverance guy, but he's preaching another gospel. I don't speak against people personally, but the doctrine is scary. And this kind of stuff starts cults. I doubt Satan is actually there. I don't think he's going to waste his time with these little peons. He's only one entity that can only be at one place at a time. Yep. Yeah, Sister Renee, I, I, I wish you would get a little bit more enthusiasm. Yeah. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> Don't hold back, Renee. Just say what you mean. Uh, uh, okay, uh, Valerie... Uh, wow, this is a big surprise question. She says, Sin City Preacher, are you Canadian? Sorry, off topic, just wondering. Uh, uh, Valerie, I'm not Canadian. Um, I love Canada. I love Canadians. Uh, I would like to be Canadian, actually. But no, I'm not. Take Thank off. You. I'm, I'm curious why you asked. I guess you're probably Canadian. Uh, the, um, Take okay. off. Uh, I don't know of any other questions in the chat room, but was, so we'll sum up things. But I also want to make an announcement. Uh, first, though, let's uh, have Brother Cripps, or you, you sounded like I interrupted you. So go ahead and make your thought and then uh, sum up your thoughts for about the study as a whole. Oh, you didn't interrupt me. No problem whatsoever. Um, so th my thoughts on the whole that uh, from 20 to the end. Uh, what's clear again is that it's not about the law. It's not about the flesh. It's uh, totally about faith in Christ's blood, and that's the perpetuation for sin. Um, only through that, it's not of it. Also, that it applies to both Jews and Gentiles, uncircumcised or circumcised. Um, that is made very clear as well. And that's all I have to say about that. And then I will also say uh, good night to everyone in the chat room. Appreciate everyone that comes. Um, also, thanks, Renee. Uh, always a pleasure to be uh, on any panel with you and to hear you um, have such enthusiasm, especially uh, on something so ridiculous as, as the point that was just made as well. So thanks, guys. So happy to see you, Jason. And again, we got to get you in as a voiceover artist. If I I'm ever you back in my industry again, man, we're doing that. Listen to me. I wish you, I wish you would. I've got a really long story about how long I've tried to figure out how to do that. And everyone keeps telling me I should do it, but I don't know anybody in the business. Everyone says you have, you have to find some way to get in. I, I just have never been able email to email me. All right. We'll talk about it. Okay. Perfect. All right. Wonderful. Um, okay. Uh, Renee, I want you to kind of summarize your thoughts on the study, but you, you missed half of it. But I'm going to ask you, Renee, I know how busy you are, but if you can go back and watch this from the beginning, I'd like to get your thoughts on the earlier verses, some of the things we said. So maybe you can make a comment uh, about that. But more important than that, sister, I, I suspect you haven't watched last week's program yet. And, I, and I, I really want your thoughts on that because Brother Cripps and I put on our thespian clothing, not literally clothing, but we uh, we put on our acting skills and played i played the part of the a, a false teacher and brother chris played the part of paul to demonstrate prosopopoeia from romans uh one uh, 14 you know one yeah 114 to romans 320. And rob told me it was really good thank you thank, thank you. you uh uh steve and also um uh, crips they both said it was probably the greatest Bible study they've ever ever seen. And uh, as I don't know if everybody's going to appreciate it as much as they did, but I think that it gives you a totally different way of understanding what, what's really happening in the first few chapters. So please, if you can squeeze that in and give me your thoughts, because we'll probably be referring back to this concept uh, as we continue along in Pauline epistles. Uh, but give me your thoughts on this, the discussion tonight. And then I want to make an announcement about tomorrow. Okay. I'm not going to. Yes. I was going to say, you need to tell people okay. I heard from them today. Uh, so what I see here is that Paul is pounding home that what Jesus did was enough 
You need to stand on that alone. Do not think you're going to be justified by any of your works. None of the law, no, no circumcision, no uh, law keeping. None of that can justify you. That salvation is about his righteousness. And today is the day of salvation. You can have his righteousness right now uh, by faith. And also that there's one gospel of the grace of God that saves both Jew and Gentiles. The Gentiles came out of pagan idolatry and polythe uh, polytheistic beliefs. The Jews had the one true God, but they were trusting in their works of the law. So they uh, all need to conclude that, that they need to repent. They need to change their mind about who Jesus is and how to get to heaven. And that it's already done. All the works were done. And that Jesus purged your sins. Like you said, his propitiation is not to cover them. Because uh, you need more blood later to recover them. They were purged by Jesus. So uh, he's trying to give them their security in Christ. And to let them know that both Jew and Gentile are equal in the eyes of God. And they're all saved the same way. And that the law is established way up here. You know, uh, we don't come against the law. We acknowledge the severity of God's standard of perfection. So uh, go ahead and tell them the good news about tomorrow, uh, Luke. All right. Uh, a couple of days ago, um, 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 Brother uh, Jack Smack 77, which probably many of you or most of you know him, uh, he, he's been probably my closest friend on YouTube for 10 years now. And um, I, I've done a few of these discussions with him uh, on various subjects uh, over the last few years. And, and obviously I want him to participate more. And he contacted me the other day and said he'd like to uh, uh, do a program, a live program. And so I talked to him about it and I said, well, what, what subject would you like to discuss? And he wants to discuss eternal torment. So, uh, if anybody's been following my channel uh, over the last few years, you you know my position. Uh, I do not believe in eternal torment. I, I believe that the lost uh, are destroyed and perish in the lake of fire, the second death. And that there's no such thing as eternal torment. So we're going to discuss that, and Sister Renee and Brother Jack Smack, the three of us are going to talk about that tomorrow night. Now we don't normally do a, a Thursday program. Has but, Jack found a way to, to get online uh, visually with us or just on a telephone call? Um, I'm not sure. We're going to try. We're going to see if it works. And, we and need to get him a cheap $100 tablet. I think we all need to chip in and just get him one. Yeah. I don't know why, if he has a computer, anybody's computer ought to work as far as just clicking on a link. And I think it's old. I think his computer's yeah. old. Yeah. But, okay, uh, we'll, whether he joins us and, and there's – uh, a video or not, uh, I'm not sure, but if nothing else, we'll have the audio uh, using the telephone as I've done with him in the past. So that's tomorrow night, and we're going to start at uh, 9 p.m. Eastern time. And we're going to we're going to cover we're going to cover a lot of verses. It's going to be sola scriptura. We're going to look at what does the Bible actually say about this subject, and so. Uh, uh, Renee, uh, anything you want to say about about that? Mm. I'm sorry, reword it. What does the say on that? Uh, anything you want to add about tomorrow night's program before we uh, we finish? No, I, I just want to say that we are all. Uh, first of all, we do not have to agree on what the fate of the lost is, but this is what this is what I would ask. I would ask that you keep your mind open. Nobody's trying to force you to believe, to cause division or any of that. We're trying to show you based on our study, what conclusions we've had. I said that I would set aside every tradition I learned and let scripture alone show me. And so for a year, I've gone through all the Old Testament and the New Testament, just like everyone has done a lot of work on this. And I have come to a conclusion that I'm leaning one way. However, I am not closed-minded into thinking I must be right. So but I'm asking, please don't call me names. Please don't call us heretics and all these evil things because we might disagree with your tradition. Also, try to see when we do disagree how we treat one another with love. Because when we say brother or sister in Christ, 
I consider you my family. I consider it real to me. When I call you my brother or sister, it's not to sound religious. I consider you part of the same body. So I would hope that you would hear, at least see why we may be coming to some of the conclusions uh, and, and be willing to, one, open your mind and research it yourself. Or if you just don't come to the same conclusion, at least have an understanding of why we did. And we do not, this is now, it's important to agree that Christ how who Jesus is and and that he oh, he did save us. We have to be have the right foundation, the gospel, the right Jesus, the right spirit and the right gospel. But other things we can have a uh, disagreement on. It, it's not necessary we agree on every detail in order to be brothers and sisters in Christ. And I think it's really bad when people start calling people names for doctrines, because someone did a video, said Renee says hell is not an essential doctrine. Well, defining what hell is is not essential to fellowship. Uh, hell is thrown into the lake of fire. So um, I just want people to respect each other and let's try to not answer with our flesh. If you get angry or offended, uh, try to breathe and then be very sensitive when you're responding to people because texting is a really difficult way to communicate. It's easily uh, misunderstood uh, and people are easily offended. So let's be extra careful around this because this is a tradition that I believe from based on the stuff we've done was brought into the church later by the pagan belief in the immortal soul and Plato's and uh, his type of philosophers. Um, that this was in the Catholic Church after the apostles had died. So um, just please try to respect each other and try not to be ugly around this. Let's just try to get along. You know, you stand your ground if that's what you believe, but, but just respect that others may disagree and always take it to Scripture and ask the Holy Spirit to show you all truth. Okay. Um. Yeah, so um, I was uh, quite surprised when uh, Brother Jack Smack asked me if we could talk about that subject. And uh, uh, so I'm anxious to do it. And uh, I know many people have uh, you've desired for uh, Brother Jack Smack to participate in these programs. So tomorrow night is the opportunity for you to, to uh, watch us and, and, and see what we have to say about that subject. Uh, but as Renee said, um, this is a, one of the one of dozens of subjects that uh, in in the uh, the fellowship that we all have that uh, we we all have varying opinions on a lot of different things. This is not something that we is, we have to be dogmatic about. Uh, we do have to be dogmatic that Jesus is eternal God Almighty. Uh, we we must be dogmatic that you don't earn salvation; you receive it as a free gift, no works, and and. We must be dogmatic that you can't lose salvation. Apart from those things, uh, we, we must give liberty to each other, freedom, because uh, none of us are, are certainly 100% right about everything. Uh, okay, so Brother Cripps, uh, uh, thanks uh, for again for participating. And Sister Renee, I'm glad you could make it, even though you had uh, uh, other things you had to do. So I'm glad you at least joined us for the second half. Thank and you for letting me come late. <laughs> Oh, you're always welcome at any time. All right. So, uh, everybody, thanks for participating in the chat room. And bless you all in the name of our great Savior God, Jesus. <laughs>